Hi, I'm Brad Keats from Canada Health InfoWay. Today, I'd like to talk about an uh, exercise we did in the summer called the Landscape Scan on Innovation. I think it's going to be pretty interesting, and I'm looking forward to updating everybody. One of the things we noticed in the Innovative Technology Group at InfoWay was there's been a lot of innovation that's happened in Canada over the years in technology and digital technology areas. And there's lots of ways to define what success looks like. Sometimes success is wrapped up in economic terms, jobs that are created, additional investment in Canada, changes to GDP. That's a big part and a really important part of what innovation means to the country. And that's why Canada's done, done such a great job of focusing our energy there. Sometimes success is also measured in uh, innovation manners, uh, things like developing and retaining talent, uh, specific R&D breakthroughs, investments in certain technology areas, artificial intelligence and quantum computing would be an example of that. And where does Canada rate and rank from a global excellence perspective? These are all very important innovation measures. What InfoWay wanted to do with the study that uh, we uh, went through in, in the summer of 2021 is we wanted to understand what the impact of these innovations were having from a health outcomes perspective. And uh, there's a lot of interesting areas that we dug into when we began to look at this. And first of all, we knew that there'd already been quite a bit of work that had been done uh, in Canada. The Naylor report from 2015, if you haven't reread that uh, recently, I really you know, recommend that you go spend a time, flip through it again. A lot of the findings that they found in there in terms of barriers to innovation still are true. Uh, there was a great report from uh, the chief group in 2019 pretty up to date about innovation in healthcare in Canada. And InfoWay itself has actually been doing a fair bit of work in understanding future trends. And we worked with some of the consultants um, and we developed uh, a perspective, I think from a citizen uh, viewpoint on what innovation would look like and some of the changes that are coming out, coming up with our Beyond 2022 study. But we really wanted to dig into the innovation community in healthcare in Canada. And that's the nature of the scan and the study that we that we ran. One of the things that really bolstered us and uh, you know gave us more confidence in this is when we looked at some of the work that uh, came out of our annual uh, citizen survey that InfoWay has been running for many years now. Uh, this was the first year that we asked a bunch of questions related to innovation in healthcare. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the study, we survey over 12,000 Canadians on a yearly basis. Uh, they're spread across all the Canadian geographies. They're representative of the uh, age and the uh, digital health um, segments that we have. And we understand just how invested they are in uh, looking at uh, technology trends within digital health within, uh, within, with, within Canada. And we asked three questions. Um, how important is it that healthcare providers like a hospital develop and implement a technology innovation plan to improve health outcomes? Uh, how important is it that Canada doesn't fall behind other countries when it comes to adopting healthcare technology? And how important is it that our healthcare system uses leading edge digital technology and does not be, fall behind other sectors like financial services or telecommunication or, or, or manufacturing? And I think these are pretty compelling um, statistics. Now, maybe they're not news, but I wanted to point out uh, a couple of things here. This is one of the areas, one of the few areas where older Canadians, those 55 and older, actually have a, a deeper uh, need and a deeper expectation of how well Canada does in delivering innovative digital health technologies compared to younger groups, those 16 to 24, or 25 to 34, or 35 to 54. That's the first part. Uh, the second part, it's also true in terms of Canadian competitiveness from a healthcare perspective and from an industry industry uh, perspective. So I think it just gives a little bit more focus in terms of what um, we were beginning to look at. Not only was there innovation happening uh, with research groups, innovations happening within startup organizations, innovation happening within healthcare, but Canadians ex have a very high level of expectation about what collectively as a healthcare community in Canada, we can deliver. Uh, the study we ran uh, was across the country and we did our best to show some uh, good geographic distribution. Um, we looked at pure research groups. Uh, we looked at groups that uh, were supporting startup organizations, the hubs and accelerators across the country. Uh, we looked at uh, regional health authorities, uh, we looked at large and small hospitals, and we were able to uh, spend time with each one of the provincial and territorial 
uh, ministries. And so it, it was a pretty good cross section. Now I want to make the point that this is a scan. It's not a survey. It, I'm sure it doesn't, uh, you know, hold up to a lot of uh, the survey statistical rigor that we'd want to look at. But there were some trends that we found uh, with the survey, and that's what we wanted to talk about. Talk about today. Uh, there were five areas that we spent time on. The first was what is each individual organization's definition of innovation, and to no one's surprise, each group defines innovation a little bit differently. At the heart of it is about a new service or a new process, doing something differently, looking for improved improved outcomes. And sometimes it was a highly technical part uh, that involved technology. Uh, and sometimes it was more about the process and how that technology was, was deployed. We wanted to understand the innovation strategies that these organizations um, had implemented. How did they identify what types of digital health technologies they were going to spend time on? How did they test and verify and validate that this was the right way of going through it? Were there some standardized methodologies that they were using? We wanted to understand the performance evaluations and frameworks uh, that they were using. Were they economic frameworks? Were they innovation frameworks? Were they health outcome frameworks? Really interesting set of outputs there. We wanted to dive into partnerships and ecosystems what was required for the most robust set of uh, innovation activities, what type of organizations were required, some really interesting activity there. And then we wanted to understand in particular what their level of engagement was with indigenous communities with respect to the innovation activities that they were, that they were working on. These were the questions that we, that we looked at. Now, most of the scan we performed in the summer of 2021. So this is pretty fresh information. And it wasn't that long ago that we were all in the summer of 2021. And as you will remember from a healthcare community perspective, uh, the COVID activities and pandemic uh, focus drove a lot of resource uh, diversions. That is some of these groups were understaffed in the in innovation areas. Uh, and we we're very grateful for the fact that uh, just about everyone was able to find time to spend with us. One of the things that happened is the COVID in innovations as a result were top of mind, certainly not the only type of innovation that they looked at, uh, but this was a really dominant one. Typically, uh, it would make sense to be able to pivot to these types of things. And there's a lot of, I think, great uh, outcomes that, that come out of that. One of the other pieces that we got quite early on when we were introducing the concept to these groups was they really didn't want to participate in another survey, an online survey, something very kind of antiseptic, uh, wasn't qualitative, it was more quantitative. Um, we also found with many of the organizations, th there were quite uh, detailed, complex, multifaceted innovation groups that were working on items. And it was difficult to capture all this information in a single interview. Uh, with a with a uh, a single a single person, uh, so we tried to keep that in mind. There was also a fairly significant investment. If I was to think about it, we had sent out a a pre prepared list of questions. Those half a dozen questions at at the front end. I'm sure there were a couple of hours work spent on preparing for it. The interview itself was was an hour long. We we were able to keep keep it within that. Uh, particular time frame. We captured the notes and send the notes back out. Those notes needed to be, uh, to be reviewed uh, and updated to make sure we'd captured everything uh, accurately. So I'm guessing it was at least half a day, three quarters of a day, maybe even a full day for most of the participants. And I think that reflected the great deal of trust that these groups had both with Infoway, with the organization that we'd uh, engaged to help us deliver it, the interest that they had and what else was going on around the country. And the, you know, the, the only thing that we gave were said we would give them back in return was a copy of the full report, uh, which will be coming out uh, soon, but we're going to give you a little quick snapshot of it. So at the end of the day, we had a quite a structured protocol, you know, one hour of uh, structured interview questions in the areas that we talked, that we talked about a process to approve uh, the notes and the conversation uh, that were there. And then an analysis and a summary that we would that we would put together. This is what the scan the scan turned into. And again, it's not a survey. It doesn't have the statistical rigor that you would look at. But I think some of the trends are are certainly good good pointers for us as as we move along. And personally, I was just totally honored to be part of the whole process. It's very exciting. This is a very kind of forward thinking, optimistic group, uh, and it's infectious when you talk with them. You can get quite excited about what's going on. Uh, to jump right to the uh, the punchlines on this, there were four themes that developed 
uh, I think, quite early and were supported uh, throughout the interviews and supported when we took a couple of steps back and we looked at it. The first part, and I'm going to go into each one of these in a little bit more detail. The first part was about, I'll call it a, a mechanism uh, for sharing knowledge, transferring information and exchanging information on innovations that are happening across the country. It's not so much that we're looking uh, and organizations are asking for a, you know, a master group to organize this or put together frameworks, but something a little simpler about understanding where innovation is happening, how they can learn about it, how they can begin to exchange information. That's number one. Number two, uh, a theme that you know, came on quite frequently, and anyone who's involved in public sector healthcare understands how important this is, is where we can look at and improve certain aspects of uh, procurement, in particular, how do we support Canadian startups in the health healthcare space? And how do we make sure that if one group goes through a procurement exercise, how can we use and leverage that group in, in other situations across the country? Uh, the theme on Indigenous innovations, there are some groups that were really had a great handle on this, they had success measures, they were well underway. Uh, but for the most part, groups said there was likely room for some improvement in that area. They were looking for suggestions. Uh, that might be an area uh, to begin to look at. And then the final area was about measurements related to innovation, economic and healthcare outcomes. I want to spend a bit of time on each one of these, but four main uh, kind of conclusions and summary of information. And again, we weren't looking for what was wrong with innovation. We were really excited by all the great innovation that uh, was happening across the country. Uh, if you're interested and you want to read the summary report where we're making that uh, available, that's certainly the tone of the report. It's very positive. And these four areas are areas that maybe could benefit from a little bit more attention. And Infoway, who looked at this initially, really from our own internal planning perspective, we thought some of it might be useful for the extended community, which is one of the reasons why we're going uh, through this presentation today. So the first part on knowledge transfer and exchange, one of the big thing themes that came up was that many, maybe most innovations that happen are, are very well understood locally. If you're working in a research group or a startup group or a hospital, regional health authorities, uh, you know, a provincial in, in integration, uh, innovation organization, you're very aware of what's happening up the street, down the street, in the city that's a couple of hours north or south or east, east or west of you, west of you. But there were very few of these innovation activities that were broadly understood on a national basis. How do we scale the innovations? How do we make sure that certain breakthroughs are understood? What's working and what isn't working on a national basis? That's been very difficult. It's not just about innovation in healthcare, obviously. It's about understanding where the best practices, the global practices are, and and how do we begin to scale some of that? Um, another observation is the groups that were focused on, I'll call it more pure research activity. They have actually have quite a mature approach to looking at these types of innovations. The closer that we got to, uh, I'll call it healthcare delivery and health outcomes, a patient outcome or a healthcare provider outcome, that tend to be, tended to be very customized to a particular group, to a particular type, type of solution. And there was a wide variety of there. So I'll call it standardization on the research side, customization on the health, healthcare delivery side. Um, also, healthcare, health outcome innovations, and I mentioned this before, they tend to be very locally focused. You would get a hospital a larger small hospital, maybe a regional health authority, singularly focused on patient outcomes, maybe a little bit of cost management, maybe something related to access and uh, access and, uh, and and equity. The further you went back down through the process of a provincial innovation group, a uh, uh, a hub or an accelerator or a pure research group, the little more difficult it was to focus on the call it the patient outcomes. There are a lot of other measures that are that are around there. And there are some things that Infoway's already begun to spend time on thinking about this knowledge transfer and exchange. One of them is a project called uh, continuous foresight and end to end process to help forecast new digital technologies and understand what impact they might have on uh, health outcomes. Uh, I've got a link at the end of the presentation if you're interested in finding out more about that and maybe giving us a hand because we're, we're looking for as much help as possible in this. Uh, that might be something you, you, you'd be interested in. The second is we're picking off some, I'll call them areas that we think can have a big impact that are, are pretty uh, not 
covered right now. There's areas where we think that we can accelerate the adoption of certain technologies. And if no one else in the country is doing it, they're, you know, for us, they're a possible topic for conversation and move ahead. A good example um, in another presentation that you might see uh, today is on an AI governance toolkit for healthcare groups that are delivering healthcare and are just beginning their, their AI, AI journey. And then the third area is on innovation measurement. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on that a little bit later. So that's, that's the first, first group. The second was related to procurement in Canada. Partly how to scale innovation from healthcare institution to healthcare institution. If there was a great innovation that was working and we wanted to shift it to another group, how could we speed up that? How could we improve on it? from, uh, from uh, instance to instance. The second aspect was how do we build stronger engagements? This idea of more value-based procurements that focus on health outcomes as the real structure and measurement as we're, as we're moving along. A lot of great work there. There's a couple of success stories related to that in the report as well. And I know that's something that everyone is either working on or aspires to, or would like to uh, aspire to. And then the third part, particularly for this innovation community was about Canadian innovators and how do we get a, a softer landing ground for them to begin to look at innovations in the, uh, uh, in, in the country and adopted in the country. Canada Health Network, the, sorry, the Can Health Network was mentioned several times. If, if you're not familiar with them, please go to their website. Uh, they've got a great reputation. They're scaling very nicely. And they're actually doing a pretty good job in these first, uh, first couple of bullets. How do we scale great solutions a little bit more naturally? It addresses some of the process aspects related to procurement. It's actually quite exciting to watch. You know, and uh, you know, everyone who works with these guys seems seems quite happy. Um, it's an interesting area for all of us. Infoway is also internally touching on a couple of procurement uh, invest investment areas, um, and uh, you know, this is a, this is a this is an area that's to totally critical that we uh, focus on and begin with. And the idea of procurement innovation, I think that's a theme that 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 showed up quite a bit. Uh, the third area, uh, a focus on Indigenous innovation or how Indigenous communi communities can access the innovation in healthcare that's happening in, in, in Canada really came through loud and clear. Uh, there were some organizations had that had very mature, effective approaches for Indigenous engagement. We, we've, we've captured those. Uh, in general, though, I'd say most interviewees expressed an active interest in improving their engagement for the reasons that everybody here on the phone um, and on the video can, can imagine. There's a lot of work to do in this space. We need to close the gaps between uh, the uh, non-Indigenous healthcare experience and the Indigenous healthcare experience. If you go back to InfoWay's um, uh, annual tracking survey, you'll see some of this jumps out uh, loud, loud and clear. And in, you know, in, in my mind, there's a possibly an opportunity about how we tie the billions of dollars of investment in healthcare innovation and all of the great activity that's happening with these indigenous uh, communities. We've begun the first couple of steps of that process. We don't know exactly where it's going to, going to end up. It'll be done with very close engagement with um, indigenous communities done in the right way with uh, the idea of a journey in mind, with the right approach from a humility perspective and many, many con conversations. It's, a, it's an important area we're starting to work quite closely with Indigenous Services Canada, and it's a pretty exciting area to spend time on. This is one I think we're 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 going to find quite interesting as well. And then the final approach is about looking at uh, measurement frameworks. And and I mentioned this before. On the right hand side here, I've talked about three types of groups. And this is just an example. It's not the only example. But what I'm proposing here is, you're, if you're an AI healthcare research group. You may be focused on talent development and talent acquisition and talent retention. That's certainly a big part of what CIFAR or the AI institutes across the country are interested in. You're interested in core research. Uh, do your researchers have significant breakthroughs that can be um, identified as a global breakthrough and improve Canadian competitiveness overall? And while you may be interested in things like economic outputs or ultimately what healthcare uh, outcomes look like, uh, you're likely more focused on those, those first three areas. If on the other hand, you're an artificial intelligence 
healthcare startup, you're likely looking for additional investment in your business. Maybe you want to turn your B or C round of funding into a DEF. Like maybe you want to really grow, grow your business. You likely do. Um, you're looking for more customers to demonstrate that you've got an effective business. And you're also likely uh, measuring the jobs and the revenue and the profitability that you have. And if you've got some investment from an organization, like I said, uh, that's likely one of the things that they're going to be looking for as well. And then finally, if you're delivering healthcare, you're a hospital, as an example, you're likely looking on the patient outcomes. Maybe you're uh, interested in uh, how healthcare healthcare professionals are consuming this. And maybe you're also interested in you know, understanding what cost management looks like. What we observed was just in this type of example, there's very few organizations that can balance between innovation outcomes at the top, economic outcomes on the, on the left-hand side, and healthcare outcomes on, on, on the right-hand side. And we think this can benefit from a little bit more work. Uh, we've begun some of that work, particularly on understanding how healthcare outcomes can have a particular type of GDP effect, either in terms of money saved, uh, jobs um, that we can now use for other types of healthcare delivery. We're starting to work on that framework. And I think ultimately we want to begin to tie it back to uh, how these three groups uh, and measurement uh, perspectives begin to, begin to tie together. Um, the final thing I wanted to say was while there were many great uh, success stories and, and a tremendous amount of innovation. One that really caught our, our attention was a, a, a framework that the Ontario Ministry of Health through their Innovation and Integration Unit uh, presented to us. And it's a standards framework called ISO 56002. And it's a guide for innovation management, a systemic approach to generating ideas, developing a specific culture, what do you need to think of from a strategic uh, perspective, what do you need to do from a process and an impact uh, perspective? I had not heard of the ISO standard in this space before. Uh, based on some encouragement from uh, the Ontario Ministry of Health, uh, I've begun to dive into it. And what I can tell you, this is a very readable document. It's an ISO spec that's very consumable. It makes sense. It's quite digestible. I'm not suggesting for a second that everyone should um, adopt the Ontario uh, approach to ISO 56,002 innovation, using innovation from a framework perspective. But I am saying it's worth a read. Uh, it's, it, it gives you a lot of things to think about. Most groups that are doing innovation already are doing some big pieces of this. This document begins to fill in the gaps. It's likely a nice piece of reading and not to the extent that anyone's got spare time, this might, you might wanna think about taking this to the top of your discretional uh, reading list. So, so please check that out. So um, one final slide here. We will soon have uh, our summary white paper on the innovation scan uh, available. It'll be on the Infoway website in the innovative technology space. If you're interested in uh, joining our Canadian healthcare innovation community, have a look at the link here. These slides will, be, will become available. Lots of roles um, that um, we've uh, specced out here. You could become a a technology forecaster, you could identify new technologies, you could help us with a little bit of process stuff, I think it's gonna be pretty pretty fun. Uh, we're delivering a series of innovation webinars, blogs and podcasts. Now Infoway itself doesn't deliver innovation, but we are bringing communities together, acting as a facilitator and a convener, some areas we know a little bit more about, and that generally what that means is we understand who else in Canada is working on these items, these areas, and we're bringing them together for a conversation. So have a look there. I think there's some good, good stuff going on. And then finally, if you have any ideas, you just want to drop us a note, innovation at infoway-inforoot.ca. I'll reread them all and we read them every day. And uh, thanks so much for your time. And uh, you know, please get involved in innovation in Canada, in healthcare. It's very exciting. And uh, thanks to everyone who participated in the scan. I really appreciate it. And with that, maybe we have some questions.